Amen. Open your Bibles, if you will, with us to the book of Luke. The book of Luke. We're going to look at the 11th chapter. We're going to read two verses of Scripture, verse 21, verse 22. We thank God for this communion Sunday. After we finish the message, we'll move quickly into our communion. Our first communion of 2016. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where we commune together. Amen. Luke, the 11th chapter, reading verse 21 and 22. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, For when a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe. Until someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him, strips him of his weapons, and carries off his belongings. Father, we thank you for the reading and the hearing of your word. Let it sink deep into our hearts. Let it fall on good ground and produce fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hug somebody, you may be seated. We spent the year in 2016, 2015, and our focus was spiritual life. And the essence of that year in teaching was learning how to be led by the Spirit of God. We spent time talking about communion with the Holy Ghost. Spent time talking about developing the spiritual life. Spent time talking about building a deeper personal relationship with the Spirit. Communion with the Holy Spirit. Spiritual life. And we continue with that thrust because God said so. And this year, we're still dealing with spiritual life. But last year, the focus was being led by the Spirit. This year, the focus is learning how to war in the Spirit. Amen. Learning how to war in the Spirit. And what God has to say about this spiritual warfare that we've been singing about, shouting about, dancing about, proclaiming and declaring, what is this all about? So we've been singing about warfare and talking about warfare. So we want to see what the Word of God has to say in a deeper way about warfare. But I need to start off by uh, answering a question that was brought up in our boardroom this morning as we gather together after the shofars of the morning pray and we seek the mind of God and the will of God for our worship experience. The question arose, what are we warring for? What are we fighting? What are we warring for? What's the purpose of the warfare? And I was taken aback when I heard that because I had erroneously made the assumption that every believer knew why they were fighting. I, I took that assumption. But it became apparently clear to me that many believers don't have a clue 
as to whether there is a war, and if there is, why we fight. I'm going to give you one verse of Scripture as a foundation that you can carry throughout this year. 1 John 3 and 8, and we understand from 1 John 3 and 8 what this whole thing about warfare is all about. 1 John 3 and 8, a very powerful passage of Scripture, makes the statement that Jesus came into the world, Jesus was manifested, listen now, that he might overcome, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Matter of fact, the Bible says, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So, Brother Jerry, what does that have to do with me? I'm a child of God. I'm in the body of Christ. And so, if Jesus' purpose was to destroy the works of the devil, and he sent the believers saying, the things that I do, ye shall do also. Wait a minute. And greater works than these shall ye do, because I go to my Father. The works we have are the same works that he had. And his works, bless the name of God, was to destroy the works of the devil. Did you hear me? Everything we do as believers should be for the sole purpose of destroying the works of the devil. We dance and worship God because worship is a form of warfare. It destroys the works of the devil. We use our staff and we hit the ground and we march because we are, in essence, destroying the works of the devil. We do intercessory prayer where we fall on our knees and cry out to God in the heavenlies for one purpose only. Not so you can have more food, more clothes. Not, it's to destroy the works of the devil. That's what the war is about. That's what the soldiers are to be about. That's what the Holy Ghost is about. Even when we talk about being led in the Spirit and talk about not fulfilling the desires of the flesh because the whole issues of the flesh being in control was a work of the devil and disobedience to God and sin in the world. Sin is a work of the devil. Amen. Amen. So our purpose in the warfare, saints, don't get it twisted, is to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. That's what we're here about. So our focus today and our message is saints at war. Saints at war. What's the war? Amen. There are many pictures of God's people in the New Testament. In Ephesians, for instance, God's people are presented as an assembly, a family, a temple, and a bride of Christ. However, the final picture of God's people in Ephesians is that of an army. This army is committed to fight a war that is global in its proportions. A war that affects and includes every portion of this globe on which we live. Because sin has entered the world. And the enemy 
is Satan, the devil. You hear me? And there is much truth in the Bible which pertains to Satan and his kingdom. This area of biblical truth is a necessary part of that which must be embraced in order to experience true freedom. We got to know who we're fighting. John 8 and 32 says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Truth is the key to freedom. Did you hear me? It is certainly a fact that Jesus spent much of his earthly ministry dealing with the devil and in emphasizing the various principles of warfare. Amen. He was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And if it were not important for us to know about Satan and his ways, then the Bible would have never mentioned him. The Bible would have remained silent on the subject. Satan is the one who stands to lose the most when Christians gain understanding about him. That's why he works so diligently, not only to blind the minds of them that believe not, but also to blind the minds of the believer. Satan does not want us to understand that he has already been defeated. Jesus defeated the devil. <laughs> he took away all armor in which Satan trusted, and he stripped him of his weapons. I mean, we just read that in our opening scripture. But if I am casting out demons, Jesus said, by the power of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. For when a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe until someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him, strips him of his weapons, carries off his belongings. He said, I am casting out demons by the power of God. See, Jesus was talking about himself, and he was talking about his warfare between himself and his adversary, Satan. He said, I am casting out demons by the power of God. And because he was doing that, he goes on to say, the kingdom of God has arrived. Listen to that. Jesus, casting out demons, brought the rulership of God mm, into play, and that rulership took authority over the rulership of Satan. He literally looked the devil in the face, and when he cast out demons, he showed him that my kingdom is greater than yours. <laughs> okay, wait, let me come. He said, the kingdom of God has arrived when he cast out demons. Wow. He goes on to say that Satan is strong and fully armed, but that he was stronger. And not only overpowered him, but stripped him of his weapons, took his belongings, and somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> when he cast out demons he said God's rulership just arrived when he laid hands on the sick and they recovered he said God's rulership just arrived when he opened blinded eyes he was saying God's rulership has just 
arrived. Amen, amen. And when we as Christians really comprehend Satan's limitations and our own godly equipping, we will be encouraged to confront the devil directly, bind him, and spoil his house. Amen. Because Jesus, our king, has already stripped him of his weapons. Amen. Amen. So we need to recognize what he has done. So we are entering into boot camp to learn what is necessary to equip us for war. There is a spiritual war raging in the spirit world right now. Amen. And there are two levels of this spiritual warfare. One level is casting out demons. Jesus showed that. But the second level, and that's here on this earth, casting out demons. Demons of sickness and demons of poverty, poverty and demons of jealousy and demons of hatred, demons of lasciviousness. Wow. Demons of schizophrenia and demons of mental illness. See, see, that's all down here. Casting out these demons. That's one level. But the second level is wrestling against principalities and powers, and world rulers, and spirits of wickedness in the heavenlies. Oh, my goodness. Whew. We're so busy dealing with casting out demons, and we don't realize that there is another level of warfare In the heavenlies. Bible says in Ephesians there, there are princes in Satan's kingdom that have been arrayed against the church. And there's spiritual rulers that have been assigned to various regions. And I want to serve notice on you today. There are spiritual wickedness, rulers of wickedness that have been assigned to your family. You wonder why every woman in your line is divorced and raising her kids by herself. You wonder why diabetes runs from one generation to the next. You wonder why your uncle was crazy and your great-grandmama was crazy and now one of your children acting crazy. Spirits assigned to destroy your family. And, I, and I, heard the, I heard the Lord say right now, and that's because there was some great thing God wanted to do in your bloodline. And the enemy said, yeah, uh, let me mess that up. Wonder why everybody in your family broke. No matter how good of a job they have, no matter how high their education, they can barely rub two pennies together. Poverty stricken. It ain't just bad choices. It's a spirit. It's trying to break your back. Oh my goodness. 
generational curses. Mm. This training is for the purpose of equipping the church to become aggressive in this spiritual warfare. Aggressive. Too many Christian soldiers remain inactive and ineffective in the time of battle. You can shout, but you can't fight. Paul, the apostle, took it for granted that as Christians, we're involved in a war for which we need the appropriate armor and that our adversary is the devil himself. He took it for granted that the believer knew that. Yet we ask the question, why are we fighting? Look around you. An unseen war is raging on every front. The war between the forces of righteousness and the forces of wickedness, between God and Satan. And the average person on the street, believer, is totally unaware of this invisible war even though he is directly involved. And in many cases, he's being swept away by the forces arrayed against him and can't figure out what is going on. And that's because we have been lulled into a place of ignorance about what God says about this war. And we interpret everything as natural happenings. And we don't see any connection between unseen spiritual forces and the various life tragedies like divorce, illegitimacy, sexual perversion, abortion, child abuse, disease, financial collapse, drug abuse, crime. We don't interpret that as a spiritual war. We we think it's natural. Well, folk are just getting worse. No, there's a spirit. Our young boys don't care about life anymore. They, they, they want to live just like everybody else, but there's a spirit. First Corinthians 2 says, but people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Word, from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them. They can't understand it. Only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. See, all this is going on, and the enemy has kept us blinded because we haven't been spiritual. We've been thinking this stuff is natural. But it's spiritual. And those who are spiritual can see, oh, my goodness, this is not natural. This is the devil. And what man does, man sees himself as his own savior. And that if he gets more knowledge and more scientific advancement, that at some point he'll remedy mankind's entire problem. As if you can think your way out of this mess. while the forces of evil have been increasing in their boldness, increasing in their strength, even to the point where they seem invincible. But listen, saints, 
God is gathering and training a vast army of spiritual leaders, spiritual soldiers. Because 1 Corinthians 2 says, those who are spiritual can evaluate all things. But they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. See, you look at me, well, how is he seeing that? You can't evaluate that because it's spiritual. Amen. 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 But I can see what's going on around us. First Corinthians 9 says, therefore I run this, run thus, not with uncertainty. Because I can see. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? Soldiers who know who the enemy is and are not ignorant of his tactics, they know who they're fighting. They know who they're fighting. And like Paul, because they know who they're fighting, they're not just beating the air. They know his spiritual weapons and how to bind Satan's strong men. Y'all really want to hear this? See, this is, this is more than just singing about warfare. Oh, yes, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's more than about just jumping and shouting and saying, we're going to war. Yes. Amen. Who you fight? You don't even know who you fight. Amen. Amen. God is in this hour calling us, this army, the church, those that are spiritual, to come to the forefront. The battle is intensifying. Yes. Amen. We must know our spiritual weapons. We must be spiritually aware. The trumpet of God is now sounding the call to battle. The army is the church. Y'all got to show far. Pay attention in the spirit. God in this hour is calling us, the army, the church, those that are spiritual, come to the forefront. The trumpet of God is now sounding the call to battle. Do it again. Do it again. Stand on your feet. Receive that call. Do it again. People all over the house let out a shout. Yeah. 
Yes, Lord. God is calling us. God is calling us. The battle is anticipating. Hear the call of the Lord. Prepare yourself for battle. Prepare yourself for battle. Come on up, praise team. Prepare yourself for battle. Listen to me. God has given the church the responsibility and the ability to change the course of history. The victory will not come through social reform. It will not come through education. It will not come through political action. It will not come through anything that the flesh does. The salvation of our nation, the church itself, the family and freedom can only be assured through spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. Do you know that you have power in God to overthrow the kingdom of Satan and establish the kingdom of God? Do you know that the spiritual authority that you have is the source of change? God is calling us into the battle. He's calling us to war. Why, Brother Jerry? To destroy the works of the devil. Y'all sing. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Can someone lift up a loud shout to our God? <laughs>